Hare Krishna, my name is Ishwar Das, and today we speak on the topic, what is the Hare Krishna movement? Prabhupada named this society, this Hare Krishna movement, it has been registered by the name, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. And Prabhupada specifically intended that the name, the the International Society for Krishna Consciousness will speak for itself, will be self-illuminating. That is, it is meant for us to become conscious of Krishna. So this Hare Krishna movement is meant for everyone to become conscious of Krishna. And we do that. We are on the street and we're chanting and people become conscious of Krishna. Whether favorably or unfavorably, they like us, they don't like us. It is just because of their liking us is because they may have in this life or in a past life acquire sufficient virtue, sufficient piety. So then they will appreciate us. But they don't like us is because either in this life or in the past life due to impious deeds, they are not able to appreciate us. But nevertheless, this preaching, this Krishna conscious movement is so powerful that if these very same people get to see us again, and again and again and they come in contact with food stuff that is offered to Krishna and they taste these food stuff and taste the transcendental effect of these food stuff then they will naturally become uh, purified and in that purified state they will gradually be able to appreciate this Krishna consciousness movement this Hare Krishna movement so this Hare Krishna movement it is meant for people to become conscious of Krishna. This is our main principle, our main business. Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. God is known as Krishna, meaning that he is all attractive. There can be no one more attractive than God. So, and you see that in every, everyone, as long as you have this human form of life, everyone is conscious about God. How it is? Some say that there is God, and some say that there is no God. The principle is the one, God. Both of them is speaking about God. They either speak about God and say that there is God, or they speak about God and say that there is no God. So God is so attractive that no one, as long as you have this human form of life, no one can avoid the principle, the basic understanding, the basic uh, fundamental principle of accepting the supremacy of God. Whether you accept it or not, you still have to discuss about it. And you will be forced. Krishna says, if you don't accept me favorably while you're living with this body, you don't try to do something and know me, then you will know me. Because I have another form. It is called the form of death. You will know me in the form of death. So everyone will know God. Either you know Him while you're living favorably, you try to understand Him, try to approach the devotees to know about Him, then, or you will know Him at the, form of, at the time of death, because He is that form of death when He approached. He takes away, in the form of death, He takes away everything from us. So, all of us will die, but it's better to die knowing God than to have this human form of life and die not knowing God. Because this human form of life is specifically meant for this purpose. That is the mission of this Hare Krishna movement, is to help those in the human form of life to understand the specific importance of this human form of life. This human form of life, unlike the animals, eat, sleep, mate and defend, it's the same thing we do. Differently, we may say yes, I eat on a plate, animal eat on the floor, I cook my food, animal don't. We may say so many, we make so many uh, uh, useless argument, but the basic principles are there, eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. So if an animal performs the same basic principle, but a human being, he performs the same basic principle, and then he is calling this basic principle that he does it in a more refined way so we can give him a name that he is a more polished animal but he's still an animal or he's a more refined animal he's still an animal 
What is the use? It is like explain like the lion. If the lion in the jungle come and he roars to all the animal, all the animal, all the other animals, and they says, yes, 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 you're the king of the jungle. But so what? He's an animal. Doesn't matter. So in the same way, if we eat, sleep, mate, and defend, it doesn't matter. We're still performing animalistic activities. Things, based on the principle of logics, when things are similar, they are the same. So if we perform similar activities like the animal eat, sleep, mate, and defend, and the concept of God is absent, then we are living animal life. So this Krishna consciousness movement is to help us when we have this human form. This human form of life has that distinct difference from the animal. And that distinct difference is that it has more refined intelligence. That refined intelligence is to understand God. So that is the purpose of this Hare Krishna movement. It helps you to understand this more refined intelligence you have and how to use it. How to use it, that is how to understand God, Krishna. Hare Krishna.